At the top of the second division, Ipswich maintained their four-point lead, but as Blackburn didn't play today, Ipswich beating Southend in the local derby at Roots Hall. 19-year-old defender Phil Whelan making his Ipswich debut, incidentally 46 years after his granddad played for Ipswich Town as a centre-forward. He scored the first goal. Southend's Trent Pyre equalised 11 minutes from time, but Neil Thompson in the final minute clinched it for Ipswich 2-1. But first, the continuing story of the battle for promotion to the Premier League as Southend United take on the second division leaders, Ipswich Town. Southend, not really Southend United, as internal differences, controversy about relocation, injuries, seem to have been reflected in results. Eight defeats in the last 11 league games. The playoffs are still a possibility, but the little Ipswich, mark. top of the table, four points clear, a game in hand is looking really good. But how will they cope without the aggressive leadership of captain David Linigan here? In comes 19-year-old Phil Whelan for his first league game. He's an accountancy student at the University of East Anglia in Norwich, but more importantly, he's quick and he's six foot three. So Thompson wants more. Not much moving in the penalty here at the moment, but it will be as he comes to take the kick now. In goes Walk and Whelan. He's got it! Phil Whelan, first league game. Great goal. His granddad will be proud of that. And they're delighted. Whelan, the grandson of a former Ipswich centre forward, shows how to do it. The big fella from the back with a powerful header, and in she goes, 1 0. Well, what a dream debut, this is. Final whistle, the end of a marvellous East Anglian local derby. What a great second half. Whelan with his first goal, John Wall with a missed penalty, Spencer Pryor with his first goal this season, and then in the end, Neil Thompson with a dramatic late winner. Ipswich surely have one foot in the Premier League now after Phil Whelan set up their ninth win in 12 league matches with a goal on his debut. That end, on the other hand, the, the second half belonged to Ipswich, with Phil Whelan scoring his second goal in his second league game in the 58th minute. Their lucky break to take the lead after 58 minutes. Phil Whelan marking his second appearance with his second goal. They've been without injured captain David Minigan for two matches. He sees a specialist tomorrow, but is likely to miss Saturday's match against Newcastle. And thanks to Phil Whelan, he's hardly been missed. Whelan scored after 58 minutes last night to make it two in two games. Some terrific Ipswich teams, but the current side have done better than most people expected since coming up last season. They're in both cup competitions, and they've been more than holding their own in the league. But Manchester United came to Portman Road today with a 100% record so far in 1993. Commentary on the match comes from Clive Tilsley. Almost a million football fans have watched the progress of Manchester United so far this season. It's an all-ticket sellout at all seat of Portman Road, and for the seventh successive away game, United have drawn the biggest crowd of the season to their host ground. No wonder they're the main attraction. Look at the attacking potential in that lineup. And if that's not enough, Ryan Robson is now fit and ready for consideration, and Dion Dublin is back in training. But how do you change a team that's won six games in a row? Beating Ipswich Town has been one of the hardest tasks in the Premier League this season, though. It's a sign of the times at Portman Road that John Walker is fit to play again today, but has to make do with a place on the substitutes bench. It's the same lineup that beat Tottenham That's in the quarter kick. I'll be thinking about it. Palace is on the near post. It's gone long towards Steve Bruce. Dealt with by Phil Whelan. Hughes. Oh, never been a fancy. David Linnigan didn't buy the dummy, but Cantona got it back, and Hughes forced it on. Baker has to clear. It's very heavy in that goal mound. Wheeler. Bruce only for Johnson. This is Keyes Gid, Jeff. Kiwomir mm -hmm. is on his way, and that's over the head of Bruce, and Spiegel has to come, he's missed it. Great chance for Chris Kiwomir. Present, 1-0. Tied up with wrapping paper for Chris Kiwomia. It's with the header. Schmeichel in control of that situation. Again, good control by Hughes. Good use of the ball, too. When Manchester United did at last win the title in 1967, they went unbeaten. Square now for Dizel. 
Manchester United a bit thin on the ground in defence. Deflected shot and in. Frank Yellow. An amazing story. On Wednesday at Tottenham, he scored his first goal for over four years. And four days later, and he's got another. Catana. Hughes. Ryan Giggs. Plenty of movement ahead. Denny Sirwin joining in from fullback. In towards Cantona, who uh, was used there for a, a jump by Whelan, who certainly seemed to have both his hands on Cantona's shoulders. Cues for Parker. Kanchelskis. Whelan is certainly not short of pace. He's a very, very big man. But he's no slouch. Another prize scout for Ipswich Town. The first team to beat Manchester United in going on three months. These remarkable surprise title outsiders, Ipswich Town. Ipswich stick with the side that halted Manchester United's gallop on Saturday. He's means John Walk and Mick Stockwell again fail to make the starting lineup. Now it's Nielsen and the two men. Inside the area is Warhurst, goes down under the challenge there. There were anxious looks towards referee Callow, particularly from Phil Whelan. Well, I think that was a fair decision by the referee. Though uh, he's being booed. Let's have a look at it now. Nielsen's ball in here. There's the challenge, which I don't think was worth a penalty. Gets the cross, it whips it towards Warhurst. Good clearance again by Whelan. Worthington might have a dip. There would certainly be an irony now if they scored. After soaking the ball, the Sheffield Wednesday pressure. Thompson swings them in with his left foot. Woods will be just on his goal run, I'm sure, here. With the six foot four wheeling in there. And this looks a dangerous one, and Whelan was there for it, but Nielsen just behind him. And we're underway in the second half. Nil nil the score. Really organised performance by Ipswich so far, but here's a ball in which just find Warhurst from Waddle. The corner conceded by Whelan. Nielsen, who seems to have overcome a little rap on the ankle he had in the first half. Phil Whelan really has come on at the heart of Ipswich's defence. Got the ball inside the area. Mark Williams now tucks it back towards Wilson. Played by Whelan once more. Well, he's in the thick of it in the early moments of the half. Left footed ball. Whelan's coming through a searching examination very well. It's such a congested area in the middle. So little space. Mark Williams couldn't get away from Whelan. Only as many minutes brought this game to life, but Spurs will need to improve on this performance if they're to gain a UEFA Cup place. But just two minutes later, Middlesbrough were level, following a desperate Gomez scramble. Early appeals suggest the ball was over the line, but the play was waved on as Borough battled for an equaliser, Phil Whelan getting the final touch. The Middlesbrough defender, having scored his first goal for the club, was justifiably delighted. But had... Big Phil Whelan's flick had led to the first goal, the former Borough defender was allowed two attempts at setting up Paul Powell's first goal of the season for Oxford. Dreadful defending from the Baggies. Whelan's flick and Miller's flap left Simon Marsh with an easy chance. It ended Oxford 3, West Brom. Colchester on Saturday helped them move in the right direction and the players are beginning to believe in their new boss. I think he's tried to make us a bit more solid, especially at the back, um, you know, defending from the front as well. Um, you know, as a whole team working hard across the whole pitch, um, I think, you know, it seems to be having good effects and we're coming, we're coming better in final game. Now. The first two Rotherham goals at Scarborough were a case of little and large. Well, large and little. Six foot four inch Phil Whelan belted the opener on his debut on loan from Oxford. And Ormerod helped Phil Whelan's career goal total rise to seven, with his fourth for Rotherham since joining them on loan from Oxford. And they still count, even if you dive after the ball and flick it out. Rotherham are in the playoffs, Rotherham two, Brighton one. The third division side took the lead after just two minutes, 
And defender Phil Whelan headed in from the corner. Good game. I think here at Roots Hall we can be, uh, you know, more than a match for a lot of teams. Um, you know, Tranmere are obviously a good team. If, if we were in the first division last year, so they'll come here and play um, play a lot of football, I think. But you know, the way we way we're playing at the moment, defending very well, and there's no reason why we can't go and win that game.